Cool. Um, so hi guys, welcome along to Yak Yarns episode two. Uh, my name's Chelsea, I'm the Deputy Chairperson of the Council and this is my friend Tori who's going to come along and join us tonight. Um, so just letting you know, Yak Yarns is a conversation series that we're having as part of the Council um, where we are working with health professionals in the health sector to talk about things young people related. Um, so if you have any questions, let us know because we're keeping an eye on the live stream. So if you have any questions for Sue as we go along, let us know. Um, but we just want to introduce Dr. Sue Backshaw. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Pleasure. Um, so we thought we'd kick start off by telling us about who you are um, and what you do. Sure. Um, well, I could start with my mihi, but it's always a bit funny doing a mihi just online. So I'll, yeah. I'll do the equivalent. Um, so um, my mihi is that I was born in Hong Kong. So I've got empire made stamped on the back of my neck. Um, so, so I've been in, living in a colony for quite a long time. Wow. But I didn't live in Hong Kong for a while, until um, I was about nine. Then I went to boarding school in England. So we came to New Zealand in 1981 with three kids and then we had another one while we were here but um i went to medical school in london so um oh. uh, sort of didn't do much medicine as you can tell i was mostly a mum <laughs> until um i did a locum at student health which was great um, at the university and i guess that's where i started working with young people but first yeah. of all I, I worked at family planning which where i learned how to talk about sex and then worked on the methadone program where I learned all about drugs. Yeah. So had lots in common with young people. <laughs> um, and then um, we started Youth One Stop Shop in 1995 because mm -hmm. we felt that, um, oh, we had feedback from young people that it was too embarrassing to go to family planning because everybody yeah. knew what you were going for. Yeah. Um, and anyway, young people are more than just sex. Um, so <laughs> they knew far more than just that. So, um, we started the one-stop shop with a free service of doctor, nurse, counsellor um, and youth workers, social workers. And that was in the centre of town back then. Um, yeah. And that was called 198 because we couldn't think of it a better name because it was 198 Hereford Street. So that's <laughs> it became 198. Yeah. Um, and um, it, interestingly enough, after the earthquakes, we had to start again, obviously, because everything fell down. Um, yeah. And um, we found a little wooden house, house on Barbados Street. Well, it was on the corner of Gloucester and Barbados. And actually it was, I think it was 264 or something like that, Gloucester Street. Um, and we noticed that next door to us on Barbados Street was 296. And then on the other side, it was a school. So we oh. rang the post office and said, could we become 298 Barbados Street? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. There's 298. We've kept the number oh. ever since. Um, yeah. But we've moved loads since then. <laughs> so, yeah. and the other thing I do is um, a little bit of research and teaching with the Collaborative Trust. And I teach anybody who wants to hear and um, <laughs> medical students and GPs and um, nurses and yeah. Awesome. Wow. That's such a cool story to hear. Like, you know, being in Hong Kong to then the UK to here to just your massive background and young people like that's yeah that's also that's something I'd love to aspire to one day but well, um, it's, yeah. it's pretty good fun I have to say <laughs> um awesome so tonight we kind of asked some young people uh questions about GP related slash youth health um so just quite a broad field um so we'll kick start off with one of the kind of general questions that came through was kind of maybe for you to tell us what a GP is so what do they do if for young people that don't know what a GP actually is sure so um GPs are doctors who, um, I guess, they work in primary care. Primary care means you can go and see them without um, having a referral. So like for going to hospitals or anything like that, you have to have a referral letter and then you get sent an appointment. But for GPs and 298 and any of the other organisations, you can just turn up. Um, so, but the trouble is with GPs now is that they're organised, they used to be kind of like standalone. So you went along and there was like usually one doctor or maybe two around the corner and you went and knocked on the door and said, hi, can I come and see you type of thing? <laughs> and that was a long time ago. <laughs> and the trouble is they cost. Um, yeah. So originally, like there was no government subsidy, but then gradually, obviously, as you know, costs went up and all that kind of stuff, 
the government subsidized um, going to a GP for old people and young people, basically. But at first it was only like under fives. But gradually that's been added to, and now it's under 14 that it's free. Um, mm -hmm. And GPs are now in things called public um, primary health organizations. And now there's a whole group of GPs in one of those. Um, and um, the, most of the GPs in Christchurch are part of Pegasus, which is like the primary health organization. Um, but then there's a few who aren't. Um, so we're members of the Christchurch PHO. Um, yeah. And it makes not much difference, to be quite honest. Um, it, uh, I think we're about the only free place, and we only go up to 25. Um, yeah. but then um, there's um, Kingdom Clinic, um, Picky to order. So Kingdom Clinic's on the corner of um, Cashel Street and um, uh, Cashel, and I think it's near Stanmore Road. So that's okay, um, yeah. um, Kingdom Clinic. And, and then there's Picky to order, which is on Linwood Ave. And then there's, um, I think the, um, there was one out in Brighton and there's one in Aranui. And they are subsidized um, and you, it only costs $18 if you're over oh. um, 14. Um, but for all of them, it, it's much cheaper if you've got a community services card. So anybody yeah. um, who's not kind of getting their bills paid by their parents, um, <laughs> definitely apply for a community services card. I think you have to be 18 to apply okay. for one. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, if you're on a youth benefit, like between 16 and 18, then you can apply for a community services card. So oh, okay. that definitely makes it cheaper. So it's really worth applying for one of those. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. And so, I, I, saw, I saw your thing about um, um, what can I go and see my GP about anything, basically. And yeah. I know most young people um, think that you only go for physical stuff like coughs and colds and flus and, you know, tummy aches and stuff like that. But actually you can go for mental health stuff. Um, and um, certainly they don't have much time. That's the trouble is the trouble. Is, yeah. 10 to yeah. 15 minutes. So it's quite hard to sort things out. But I teach them all to do a heads assessment. So everybody listening can be a secret shopper. Um, <laughs> and, and when they go to a GP, find, just make sure they do a heads assessment. And what that does, that means is that they should ask you about who you're living with, should ask you about school or work, you know, what you're doing. Um, they definitely should ask you about um, your mood. They definitely should ask about any sexual health stuff you might need. Definitely should ask about whether you use alcohol or any other drugs. Um, and they obviously this is all on top of what you've gone for. So <laughs> yeah. the whole point is that they, we've been trying to get them to just do everything while, while somebody's there rather than go, oh, right, here's your cough. We have to come back for anything else, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, if they're not doing that, let me know and I'll go around and teach you again. <laughs> <laughs> So obviously you can go to a doctor for a range of things. Um, if you are going to a doctor for your mental health per se, uh, at what point do you know that it's gone from just you're having a few bad days to you need to go seek help? Good question. If you find that you, you're so low that you really can't function very well, um, whether it's at school or at work or, or just around the house, you can't get out of bed, but even just before, before you get to that, if, if it feels like it's getting to that, and if it's been going for two weeks, definitely go and see a GP. If you're having any suicidal thoughts and thinking, gosh, I, I'm going to give up. I can't be bothered. I, I might as well not be here. Definitely go and see a GP. Awesome. Yeah, good to know. Um, so what do you do if you've been to your GP and you're concerned about something and maybe they just don't feel like they're taking you seriously and you're just struggling and you don't know what to do. Do you have any advice on what people can do if they feel like they aren't being taken seriously? Well, if you're at school, definitely go and see the school counsellor, without a doubt, because then they can actually speak up on your behalf to the GP um, and say, look, this is serious. Don't just fob them off. Yeah. Um, and if you've got supportive parents, obviously, then that's all, that's great if, you know, you can get them to kind of chippy them along. If you haven't got either of those, um, actually, if you ring Youthline and say to them, they're not taking me seriously, can you help? You know, can you yeah. kind of contact somebody for me? That, that's really helpful too. 
Uh, so obviously a lot of young people, they'll be heading off to the GP uh, with some with parents. Um, obviously that's not the case for everyone, but for those who do go to the GP typically with parents, uh, what advice would you give them uh, if they are wanting to see a GP without the parents, but they're feeling a bit too awkward to outright tell their parents, I don't want you to come in? Yeah. Well, again, if the GP doesn't send the parent out, let me know because I teach them all to send the parents <laughs> out. <laughs> if they're not doing that, I need to know. Um, <laughs> I'll make sure they get better, you know, listen to the teaching better. Um, but um, basically, um, it should be, um, I, it's hard for as a young person to say this, because as I say, you don't really want to ha upset your parents. Yeah. But um, sometimes it's, it's, it's worth saying, um, if you don't want to upset your parents, when, when you go first time, um, say, you know, let it all happen and then go, um, mum, would you mind if I, I got to know the doctor now, it was really cool that you, you came with me. Um, next time, do you, would it be okay if I go on my own? Now I know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. So that the parent feels happy that you're, you know, the GP is going to talk to you, but also then you can go on your own. But most GPs should ask the parent to leave. You know, like halfway through. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's really good tips. I think it is. It's like it can be quite scary, quite daunting if you're sitting there, but you really want to speak to a GP without, you know, your parents around. But you, that upsetting of worrying about it is, yeah. yeah. Um, so you can either say, can I go next time on my own? Or just, just towards the end, you can say, Mum, do you mind if I just talk to the GP on my own now? If the, if the GP hasn't said that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And most, most, mom, you know, most parents are pretty good with that. But if your parent isn't, well, just ask if you can go on your own next time. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you are still kind of, so if you're back, we're kind of going a little bit backwards there, but if talking about your GP and you're meeting with them, maybe by yourself or with your parents, um, and you're kind of feeling that you're just not gelling with each other, you're not really getting each other, you're really struggling to communicate. Um, at what point do you know to seek out a new GP? Can you go seek out a new GP? Um, or are you kind of stuck in there if you've been there for a while? Yeah, this was the question was, is you're not going to like the answer. Um, <laughs> if you're at uni, great, just go and enrol, enroll with uni or, or with Polytech with their student services. But if you're not, it's really hard because um, loads of doctors aren't taking any new patients. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not that you can't go and ask for a new GP. You can, but the trouble is very few of them are taking new people on. But if you find a GP, you know, if, you, if somebody recommends you to a GP, you can give them a ring and say, I'd like to register with your practice. Um, yeah. And then you go in, you collect the forms and you fill in the forms. And then um, hopefully they'll give you an appointment. Um, <laughs> and then at that appointment, you agree for your records to be transferred from your old GP to your new one. Gotcha. And that's really helpful because then the new GP knows kind of like what's been happening to you and what medications mm. you've been on and all stuff you've probably forgotten anyway. Um, yeah. And the immunizations and stuff like that. So it's really helpful if you can give permission for your new doctor to get your old records. Cool. Awesome. So when you're looking for a new doctor, um, maybe it's been that you've moved house um, or maybe, um, I don't know, you've just started up university. Uh, what would you do to look for a new GP? So uh, say you didn't have a choice and you needed to find a GP in your area, what would be the best way to do that? Uh, go online um, and just go um, a GP near me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's the best thing to do. And quite a lot of, it's quite good if you can choose a practice where there's lots of, lots of GPs in a way. You don't get such personal service, but you've got a choice yeah mm -hmm. so that if in that practice you choose one and they don't tend to be somebody you can gel with then at least there's other people in the same practice so you don't have to go through all the rigmarole of getting changing you know your notes and stuff yeah yeah awesome and we kind of talked about it earlier but just to reiterate i guess again um what are like where are the cheapest places to go in Christchurch? You know, I know you talked about the funding with the community service card, but is there any other funding? Like, where's the places? Because then cost is a huge barrier for young people. I know, like, I've had multiple conversations with young people who 
don't want to go to their family GP because they're concerned about their parents knowing about something. So they want their own one, but you know, they're worried about the funding because they don't have the money themselves to go. And so it can be quite a huge barrier to actually accessing a GP. Um, yeah. I know. It's, it's really bad. We, I tell you what, the, we'd love to see you at 298, but we're at capacity, you know, we're just full. Oh, wow. uh, we only get enough money to have 20 hours a week doctor and 20 hours a week nurse. Mm -hmm. um, so um, do your best. It, honestly, if you're feeling really bad and there's nowhere else to go, then go online um, to the 298 website and fill in the form. And even if we can't help you, we can usually find someone who can help you. Um, but if, if you're ha having to do that, write to your MP and say, please give the 298 more money. <laughs> <laughs> or write to the DHB and say, please give 298 more money. Yeah. Uh, and we know 20% of young people do not have enough money to go and see a, a GP. Mm. It's terrible. I mean, 20% mm. is a lot of people. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, uh, you're not only a GP, you also do a lot of work um, with young people. Um, what do you think are some of the biggest issues that young people are facing right now? Uh, oh, definitely mental health issues. So anxiety and depression and kind of, um, well, I don't know. I, I hear a lot of young people say to me, what's the point? Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of like um, losing hope a bit, mm. um, which is really sad. But, you know, we've had a lot to deal with, so it's not really surprising. Um, I think family violence is a big part of that, mm. um, especially growing up, you know, when you're under 10, because um, mm, yeah. it really affects you, yeah, for a long, long time, especially if you don't get help. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know, but my, my feeling is that alcohol and other drugs don't, they're not as much of a problem as that. Um, yeah. And certainly my advice would be don't use alcohol and other drugs to help you feel better. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, we've had a couple of questions that came through, um, so I thought I'd sneakily throw them on you. Uh, sure. um, so one, at the moment, it's kind of like prime time for university students like myself, where it's um, exam time, so stress levels are very high. Even for high school students, it's just stress levels. Um, everyone, I think, is feeling a little bit stressed, you know, that post wind down from lockdown and everyone's just feeling stressed. So I guess the question is, is what can you do to manage your stress? Top tips for managing stress. Cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so the, I guess what the major thing is getting enough sleep. If you, and it's so tempting not to, cause it's so tempting to stay up, you know, till um, three o'clock in the morning cramming and everything, but mm. really, you cannot pump function. You need eight hours, even though it's very tempting to keep going. Um, yeah. You'll find actually you're cramming next day. You can do an hour's worth in what would have taken you three hours the night before. So yeah. really yeah. important to get enough sleep. Second thing is obviously brain food, fruit and veggies. <laughs> Try and keep away from the chips. <laughs> yeah. um, and if you need something to keep you going, have some carrots and apples in the fridge so you can chew on those to keep you going while you're studying. Um, I think the third thing probably is do get some exercise because when you exercise, especially when you get your pulse rate going, you make endorphins mm -hmm. and endorphins help to cheer you up. You actually also make cannabinoids. Um, so, you know, you don't need to buy it. You just run around the block fast. <laughs> 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 and that helps calm you down so um amazing the brain's so clever um but then um i guess it's quite useful if you can um try and do the mindfulness thing so you train your brain to focus as much as you can so it's yeah. it's like most, most of those apps around breathing you know yeah and the, the clever thing about breathing and, and i know it doesn't sound clever but <laughs> <laughs> when you breathe out, you go, you actually make GABA. And GABA is a chemical in the brain that calms everything down. It's absolutely fantastic. So you lower your shoulders and you go, and if you do about five of those before you start studying, it's really helpful. Wow. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> and if you're a smoker, which of course none of you are, what you do is you, 
you get an empty cigarette box and you get some paper straws and you cut them up the length of a cigarette and you put them in and you take one out and you go oh. and it's great and by the time you've done five it's gone soggy but then you know that that's <laughs> the time to study then <laughs> wow there we go so your first tip you mentioned about making sure that we get enough sleep uh, have you got any tips for people for good sleep hygiene? So what can we do to make sure that we do get good sleep? Yeah, so what you do, you get a piece of paper and you write down five things. Um, and they could be anything like, I don't know, have a hot drink, um, brush your teeth, you know, I don't know, put your jammies on, um, <laughs> read a real boring book um, <laughs> and switch on some really calm music. And the idea is you've got to train your brain because you've got this sleep center in your brain that switches off, switches everything off. And in the olden days, before we had electricity, um, <laughs> when the daylight went, the center in your brain switched everything off. You know, that was, you know, that was the signal. Great. Yeah. Um, but now we have 24 seven light, so it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is train that sleep center by having the same five things every night for at least two weeks. Um, and to start that off, it's best if you can try and get up at the same time every day. Because if yeah. you don't, then you're not tired enough because you slept in till two o'clock in the mm -hmm. afternoon. And so, of course, you're not tired at 10 o'clock at night. Um, but if you can try and get up at the same time and then usually go to bed at the same time and have those five things that you do. It doesn't matter what they are, really. Not exercise and not scary movies. <laughs> <laughs> but um if you can do those same five things it's really helpful awesome um so basically we're going to talk about the youth hub now because um mess obviously you've basically co-founded what your big plans are for the youth hub so we just wanted you to let you have your place of you know plug the youth hub everything about it what's happening you know share about it all with us well my main plug is that um We've been, we've been co-designing for the last two years um, yeah. with the main organizations who are coming in and we've done heaps of focus groups with different sorts of young people. Um, yeah. So we went to Tapunawai, the Youth Justice Center, um, the Diversity Group at St. Andrews, Avonside Girls High, um, Tioraho, um, and the Youth Council, obviously. Um, I, and you, were, you guys weren't going all that much two years ago, so I would have come to you. <laughs> um, but I'm now looking for what, and you'll see in a minute, we've got um, some, the, we've done the outside and I'll show it to you, yeah. but we need intensive help with the insides because um, it's mostly just open plan at the moment. And what I need, I've got four people on the Youth Hub Youth Advisory Group and I need a few more who have got some time. Yeah. Um, so this is my plug. Um, <laughs> If you've got some time and you're keen, and it's really important that we have all different sorts of young people, because the most important part of the hub, it's got to be welcoming to as many different sorts of people as we can. So everybody yeah. from, I hate to say it, skinheads, but they count too, um, <laughs> right the way through to, you know, refugee and migrant young people and, you know, everybody. So, because the, the most important thing for me for the hub is somewhere where um, you feel you belong, no matter who you are. Um, so it's creating that atmosphere of belonging and acceptance that is what we're after. So we want the interior to, to reflect that. Yeah. So we need, um, I need some people who might have about an hour to spare once a week. Um, and there'll probably be Zoom meetings at the beginning, um, but then we'll go to different organizations that are coming in, but then it'll be for the, like the interconnecting spaces, it will just be young people, and especially for the um, the um, housing. Cool. Well, so, nice. should I show you some pictures? Yeah, go on. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. How? I'll share screen. Uh, okay, so um, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. Cool. So. Um, Oh, that's just all the people on our board. Some of you might know, um, uh, um, there's a lawyer and a, an accountant and Kane's just qualified as a teacher and oh. Willemus Naitahu and Phyllis Samoa. And so we've got to, uh, a few different people. Um, and these are all the agencies who are coming in. Oh, so wow. 
Wow. Obviously, the youth one-stop shop and Qtopia will be there full time. Um, oh. The collaborative trust doing research and training. The whole organ, all those three will come in as a whole organisation. Yeah. So will Catapult probably, who help with employment. Um, yeah. Community law will come in and give advice like once or twice a week. Oh. Um, Youthline will be there. The whole organisation will move in. Wow. And so will Voice. They support young people in state care. And Cultivate will be there with growing organic veggies. And then mm -hmm. visiting agencies will be some government agencies. Um, nurse more school nurses, hopefully we'll have an office there. Presbyterian support will advise with income support stuff. Um, Methodist Mission will um, run the housing. And then supporting families and mental illness will come in as needed. And City Mission, um, hopefully will provide their youth alcohol and other drug counsellors and we hope that they will also help run a, um, like a drop-in centre for parents of teenagers so that they can get yeah. some support um, like se kind of separately yeah um, and it's going to be at 109 Salisbury Street so here's Durham Street here's the casino yeah. um, and that's um, Colombo um, and that's Gracefield Ave. Sorry, that's that's Gracefield Ave. That's Colombo. Um, uh -huh, okay. Yeah. That's the Salvation Army Citadel. Yeah. And this is the old bowling club. Ah. Uh -huh, yeah. Salisbury Street. So um, that's what it looks like now. That's the big car park, and that's the bowling club rooms, <laughs> and, that, and that's the greens. <laughs> a bit dilapidated since the earthquakes. Um, uh -huh it's been not used since the earthquakes um yeah. and anglican care bought it for us oh, wow. awesome. um so we can't um sign the lease until we've got resource consent but it's in for re consent now and it's publicly notified so if you want to make a submission say yes we need this um i can send you the link <laughs> sounds good we'll put that up there yeah um and then um so you can see that it's kind of pretty central um, it's about 15 minutes walk from the bus exchange um, and near the, you know, Turanga and Margaret Mahi playgrounds over here and, you know, the art centre and stuff and sports facility. So if we ever get that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one day. Um, and this is what it will look like from Salisbury Street. So wow. that's like the greeting fellow. Um, yeah. And um, this is greenhouses on the roof. Oh, wow. wow. That's cool. Um, and this is a cafe. Um, we'll probably make it vegetarian because these grow veggies. Um, <laughs> and um, we'll um, that obviously be run by young people um, and kind of first job opportunity and training opportunity and stuff like oh. that. Yeah. Um, and then this is what, um, we've got apartments going down this side. So three to four bedroom apartments. Um, and uh, one of them will have four bedrooms and they'll have downstairs um, like um, bedrooms, but the others will, for obviously people with wheelchairs and stuff. We yep. need use advice, I mean, your advice really in terms of, um, do we have, like in one of them have maybe a parent with children or you know, a couple of solo parents with their children? Um, we're not quite sure yet. Um, mm -hmm. At the moment, they're single for people, single people obviously, um, yeah. like a flatting situation. And then this will be a caretaker's kind of cottage thing. Oh. Um, and then that's what it looks like from the, from the sky. So oh, this, wow. is, this is Salisbury Street going down here. That's Gracefield Ave going around there. Um, and with, there's two lots of housing. So there's like hostel type housing here um, with 10 rooms on each floor and a youth worker living in and shared kitchen and laundry and... Um, um, like lounge um, but each room will have ensuite um, and then here's a basketball court and then um, this is kind of like a courtyard for the hostel and then a minute I'll show you underneath this is 298 yeah. and then some the services area so interview rooms and shared office space and then here is an event center holding about 200 yeah. people which you can use for um, indoor sport or gigs or dance or whatever. And then oh, here, Creative Arts Centre um, with maybe recording studios, although Turanga said we could use theirs. 
but definitely band practice rooms and stuff like that. Um, and um, these are greenhouses on the roof. And then there's the greeting ferry and the cafe. This is an art gallery to show kind of like what you've created. And oh. then a wee quiet courtyard sort of spiritual area there. Awesome. So um, yeah, that's what it looks like a bit more closer up. It's massive, really, when you think about it. Yeah. Like they're all separate, like, you know, the house is together, but they're all a house itself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so this is, you can see here, this is the hostel one. Yeah. Um, and then here's the townhouses. And yeah, basketball court and courtyard and yeah. It's so cool. So that's what we really need your help with. <laughs> so we've only, it's only going to cost $20 million. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm hoping for is that um, we've applied to be one of those shovel ready projects. Yeah. Um, and I uh, said, so we'll be shovel ready if you give us $10 million. Because <laughs> that'll, that'll pay for the housing and the kind of like the services at the back here. Mm -hmm. um, and then I thought, well, then we can fundraise for the arts, the arts center and the cafe and the waiting ferry and the greenhouses. Yeah. So it's so cool. It's really yeah. cool to see it as well because you hear a lot about it, but you don't always don't always get to see the photos and things. So it's really nice to be able to see the photos of the project itself, and actually, I think it kind of engages people more too. They actually get to yeah. see what your plans are. Yeah. Um, so that they're worked, as I say, we've worked for two years. At the beginning, we just had this this housing down this side, and then here all of this was cultivate. Um, oh. Then we had a meeting with the neighbours and they felt there should be more residents. It's residential zoned area, so they, the neighbours don't want us. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we thought, well, well, we'll make it more residential. So we added some more housing and we put cultivate <laughs> on the top. So that worked out quite well. Yeah, that's awesome. And really we need cool more that. housing anyway, because, you know, there's not enough youth housing. So people yeah. can stay here for, um, for, they'll have to pay rents, but it'll be income related rents. Um, and the idea is to stay between three and 18 months um, yeah. while you're looking for a job. The only criteria will really be that you're looking for a job or in training. Mm. Awesome. And it's cool. It's a huge, like, yeah, massive issue housing, massive issue just for young people in general for safe places, you know, and they might have a home, but it might not be a safe environment. And so, um, yeah, having this is just a massive need, huge need. I mean, everywhere probably in New Zealand needs it, but. <laughs> well, you know. yeah, I, I reckon there should be at least one in Hamilton, Dunedin, or three in Auckland, one, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So to plug, so you plugged your like youth hub. How do people go about if they want to donate to you guys or they want to do fundraising for two nine eight? How do they go about it? Have you got any like okay. special links or? So um, basically, the websites. Um, I should have written them down. Hang on, I'll write them so on a whiteboard. Hold on. <laughs> so um, basically, um, the youth hub one is. Um, Oops. Youth Hub <laughs> Chisha. Uh, org. Awesome. Uh, and then um, the um, 2981 one is um, just 298, basically. Um, so it's just... Um, uh, so, and they both have donate now buttons, but a surprise, um, surprise. Um, <laughs> um, and if anybody's interested in being on the youth hub, youth yes. advisory group, yeah. um, then, um, there's an info at the, on the website, there's an info at it, it, the emails, just info at youth hub chicha. Um, awesome. and then yeah. I'll get in touch with you. Um, but on that email, if you could just let me know your, um, cell phone number as well because um often i know some people don't look at their emails that much so i usually text yeah. and say look at your email please <laughs> <laughs> and so in terms for the like the youth advisory group that you're setting up for the youth hub is there a particular age group obviously youth but is there a particular age range that you've got for the group or is it just whoever? any age um um i think most people at the moment are kind of like between 16 and 25 but yeah. um yeah any age is fine awesome 
Cool. Have you got a specific number that you're wanting to get, or is it just whoever you can no, get? No, whoever, whoever's keen, basically. Awesome. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. At the moment, we um, we thought we'd try and have meetings like around sort of half a three, four ish, um, just in case people have things in the day, you know, like yeah. school and stuff. Cool. Um, yeah. And um, our next meeting will probably be with the architect. Nice. Oh, I'm just that. waiting to hear back from her as to when, um, when you know, she'd be free. Yeah, awesome. Um, so kind of just a, like a final wrap up question. What is the one thing you want young people to take away from this conversation tonight? Um, be in charge of your own life. Yeah. Um, try and, try and um, you know, if, if you're finding it hard to make decisions, talk to somebody wise, but, you know, it's your life. Um, and, yeah, I think if you can do, do those keeping healthy tips, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, but please, please, please never hesitate to reach out for help. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sue, for joining us tonight. We've greatly, I've learned so much. I've loved seeing about the Youth Hub. I was so excited to hear about it. Um, cool. Really appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you so much. Um, just a little notice that we have recorded this, so we will be uploading it later in the week. Um, keep an eye out tomorrow because we'll be announcing our next speaker, um, but we'll be back again next Sunday at 7pm live streaming on Facebook. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.